another new episode of We Are 757 The Show. And we got Jalil 25 Nelson in the building. Yes, Here sir. Yes, bro. sir. Appreciate Pleasure you coming. Here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, what's the significance of the 25? Because I know that's your number. Oh, Everybody man. Know that. So, it actually started in college, man. It started in college. I actually, in high school, we had flip flop jerseys, man. Home, I was number 12. <laughs> Away, I was number 10. It used to mess people up. But when I finally got to college, um, I chose 25, surprisingly, because of Steve Kerr. Steve so Kerr? Because of Steve <laughs> Kerr, man. I, the shooter. Okay. The shooter. When I actually could shoot now, I ain't, I ain't too much of a shooter anymore, man. But, um, but yeah, so I chose 25. And then my boy Dante, man, um, most people know him in Montana, mm -hmm. you know. But um, he was like, man, I'm going to start calling you 25. And it stuck. It stuck, man. So ever since then, my freshman year in college, like everybody just been calling me two five ever since then. Dang. Yeah. Sure, I would have never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> so you from Suffolk? You probably the first person that came on the show. It's from Suffolk. What was, what's it? What's it like living out there? Cause my homeboy live out there now, and it's just like I know prior to them building it up now. Right. It just looked like super <laughs> rural, rural, like like. And it, it, it definitely is, man. It definitely is. Um, honestly, it, back then, it was it was nothing out there. It was nothing out there, you know. Um, I remember my first year overseas, and people used to ask me where I was from. And I used to tell them Norfolk, because that's the only thing that they would know. <laughs> uh -huh. they, I was in Virginia. They'd be like, what part? I'm Norfolk, you know? Like, yeah, like, you know, but, um, but Suffolk was cool, man. Um, I think, you know, really after... You know, Marquis Cook and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you go back any, even further, Tony Smith and, um, you know, a lot of older cats that really kind of put stuff on the map, you know, is when I felt comfortable with saying like, yo, man, I'm from Suffolk, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So um, growing up there was different, but it, it kind of helped me and mold me, you know, into the person that I am today. So I'm definitely grateful for it. Is it like... Uh is there like a bad side and good side to suffer? <laughs> <laughs> so honestly, like, like every other city, like every other city. If you stay, I mean, back then, man, you know, suffer was suffer, man. It really wasn't a lot of, you know, bad side to suffer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now times are a bit different. You know, I think probably over the past maybe you know five, six years, man, man, you see suffer on the news now. Mm -hmm. You see Suffolk and, you know, shootings and, you know, homicides and things like that. You know, back when I was coming up, I mean, sh you could leave your door open at night, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but now, you know, times have changed. So, I mean, now, you know, downtown Suffolk is considered to be the bad part. You stay in mm -hmm. northern Suffolk, you in the good part of mm -hmm. Suffolk, you know. So, um, it's, 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 it's different now. Yeah, all, different. all the cities is getting wild now, even though I don't know what it is. But, yeah, it is crazy. Absolutely. Um, so... When did you first pick up a ball, and was basketball like the only sport that you were doing while growing up? No, man. My So, um, Pops wasn't really around when I was coming up, man. So, I really had my brother as like that, that role model, father figure to look up to. And he put me in Pop Warner football, you know. And I'll, I'll never forget this play, man. They kicked an onside kick. And I don't know whether the kicker just looked me in the face and was like, yeah, that's who I'm going to kick that's it to. Man, that's how they usually do it, though. <laughs> <laughs> but he kicked me this ball, man, and we was playing Crowder. And it was like three cats that hit me at the same time. And when I had this lump on my arm for like a week, I said, you know what, Mom? Football not for me. I think I'm going to go to the hardwood. And, you know, so I probably picked up a ball at like maybe nine, ten years old. Nothing official. It was never nothing official. It was just, you know, a little round the way, me shooting around and stuff like that. Um, then I started playing in Parks and Rec. Started playing in Parks and Rec when I was probably maybe 13, 14 years old. Okay. And it just kind of blossomed from there, man. For real. Just kind of blossomed from there, for what, sure. What was, what was so, was your brother the, your big influence, or was there a guy in Suffolk that people looked up to? Oh, man. I would have to say it had to be my brother. Mm -hmm. It had to, you know. Anything that he did, you know, I kind of wanted to implement in my own life, mm -hmm. you know. So he, he played basketball at Lakeland High School. Um, I remember seeing uh, a poster with him, and they had, like, this little photo shoot. 
and they had like the schedule of their games and I saw him sitting down in the chair and I was like, yeah, man, like I think that's what I want to do. You know, I want to play basketball. So it was it was definitely him. I mean, I had a, a, a lot of other people that kind of influenced me along the way, but um, with him being there with me and I could see him, you know, 365, 24, seven, yeah. like he definitely had the, the biggest imprint on my life. For sure. How much older is he? Oh man, my brother now, he is, shoot man, he about to be 50 soon. Oh dang. So Maybe. I'm 34, yeah, so he's like 16 years. So was Lakeland, uh, was Lakeland good when he was there? Yeah, so they actually were state runner up. They were state okay. runner up, I want to say in 93, 94. When he came out, man, like, so they were state runner up that year. Um, ended up falling short down the stretch, but they was loaded. They were loaded, man. It's a lot of unkept secrets, I would say, you know, in Suffolk. You know what I mean? So um, Suffolk seemed like the type of community, like, if they got a team going to the state championship, the city shutting down. Shutting down. <laughs> shutting down, man. Everybody's going. Yeah. Everybody's going. I remember. Even if you like from Nashville River or the kids it, store, it don't matter. It don't matter. You're from Suffolk. You yeah. know, we only got three high schools. I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, if you if you if you're doing something, definitely on a basketball or football level, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we definitely the whole city's coming out to see you. Whether it's you downtown Suffolk, Northern Suffolk, don't matter, man. You from Suffolk at this point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get to Lakeland High School, uh or besides that, did you play junior junior uh junior high school? Um, nope. Middle school, sorry. I didn't even know about it. So when I was in middle school, my eighth grade year, man, it was still one of those, I'm just playing rec ball. I didn't even know about JV. I didn't really know about, you know, high school that much because um, I never went to go see, you know, my brother play when he was um, coming up. I just saw like the pictures and stuff like that. So I never actually went to see him play. Um, so not until my ninth grade year when I got to Lakeland. Mm -hmm. um, that I knew there was a trial. I knew there was a high school team. Like no one ever like put me in that atmosphere to Dang. really know about it. That's crazy. So yeah, and I think about that twenty four seven. Like, damn man, if you would have started sooner, like I yeah. wonder. Uh -huh. But uh, but yeah, man, you know I I never really knew about it. So my ninth grade year, I get to Lakeland and missed the trial. Mm -hmm. Missed the trial, man. Didn't even know when the tryout date was and slipped up. Missed it. So you ain't have like people in the community like you went to the basketball court and be like, hey, you coming to the trials, right? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I <laughs> wish I did. We used to always do that, man. Like that, like we seen a kid that was like nice, like playing in college park and be like, bro, come to trials. Like you actually, you actually could make the team. You actually man. could do to help us. You know what I mean? I, yeah. No one ever really told me about like, yo, man, you should come. You know, to the trials, JV trials, man. You know, try for the team. Woo -woo -woo. Never got, it. Yeah. never got that. The the furthest I got my eighth grade year, I would say, was um, we had a like I said, like a, a parks and rec recreation team, man. Um, the Lake Kennedy Clippers, mm -hmm. and you know, we would travel to like Norfolk. Uh, we would go to North Carolina, um, but other than that, nope. Never even knew about a high school team. Dang. Never even knew I could play JV in eighth grade. Mm. So yeah, I think about that twenty four seven. So ninth grade, when so when do you make the team on Lakeland? I made the team finally my sophomore year, okay. JV. Sophomore year JV, and you know how they look at cats that's you know playing JV and you're a mm -hmm. sophomore. It's like all right, well you can't be, but but so good, <laughs> you know you you're sophomore, you playing JV, but I think it was it was that year, man, where I was like, you know what, I can really do this. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I can really see a future, you know, um, playing basketball, man, and, and actually getting somewhere with it. Okay. And um that year we, we did pretty well. We did pretty well, man. Um Who you was know, your coach? What was your first practice like? Woo! <laughs> Man, it was different. It's Coming not like recreation. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it is not like recreation. Recreation, you're in there, you know, you're just shooting around. It's a shoot around practice. That practice, I don't think we picked up a ball, man. I had Coach Walden. He's still at Lakeland High School to this day, man. Mm. And we talk about this all the time. I got that picture in my room of our JV team. Um, but he, man, he was hard-nosed, man. You know, um, 
you gonna run. That was probably the best shape that I had been in to that point, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, you're not picking up a ball. Um, we just gonna get in here and we gonna run. If you ain't in shape, then there's nothing that I can show you. Yeah. So um, he definitely instilled a lot of discipline in me at a at an early age, mm -hmm. at an early age during that point, man. But it was an eye opener, mm -hmm. you know. Um, this is how I know, like, you know, a lot of people, you know, say they can play at this high level. But once you get there and you like, oh, shoot, I'm like, wow, so this is what y'all do. Mm -hmm. It was it was an eye opener for sure. But um, it helped me. It helped me throughout the years, though, man. So, you know, I acknowledge it and I'm grateful for it. Did you make did you make uh, varsity your junior year? I did. And I was determined to do so. Cause it was no going back. You can't play JV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> so now, now you can't. Now you can't. You That's know. Crazy. So <laughs> so I'm like, yo, like what? Like you can be in the 11th grade and you can play JV. <laughs> like, oh, this is different. This yeah. is different now. Like seriously. Yeah, it's super different. So um, I was determined, man. Over that summer, um, I don't care if it was hot. Blazing hot outside, man. I stayed in a, um, grew up in Wilson Pines, but right outside of my apartment, um, it was a basketball court. Mm -hmm. So every day, every day, man, hot, nighttime, you had a street light out there. I'm out there, you know, getting shots up. Um, mom would buy me an outdoor basketball, man, and it's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So, are the courts packed and stuff? Oh, man, back then, absolutely. If you was at Lake Kennedy, um, Tyne Street, oh man, out Hollywood, mm -hmm. course was packed. I remember passing that court. Yeah, yeah, man, you know, court course was definitely packed back then. I mean, it's um, it was one of those things where if 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 you <laughs> if you lose that first game, you might want to go home. If you ain't no big name, <laughs> if you ain't no big name, man, and you if you ain't shoot, we shooting for captain, and you don't hit that first shot, hey man, you might want to just pack it up. Mm. Today ain't your day to <laughs> <laughs> So what what was the difference between uh, JV and varsity when you got there? Oh man, who was on your team? Was there anybody that was like superstar that was like, oh, you the man? Varsity, my junior year, um, I would say we had a left handed cat, man, Darrell Skeeter. Oh my god, like I honestly used to look up to him, like seriously, man. Um, when I was playing JV, he was playing varsity, and we was both sophomores, man. But he he had the smoothest jumper, and then he was left-handed. I think I, he was the person that I looked to, like, man, I want to be left-handed. <laughs> I wish I was left-handed, man. They have that nice slingshot shot, man. Like, I wish I was left-handed. But um, looked up to him. Um, Coming up at Lakeland, man, we ain't have a lot of big known names. You know what I'm saying? We ain't have like Marquee Cooks, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, um, but we had good, solid, you know, around the way type guys, you know what I mean? I know you can hope, but you might be having a struggle with your grades mm -hmm. or something like that. But if we could have had everybody on our team my junior year, man, we would have made a nice little run, for sure. For sure, man. Um, couple guys that you know got caught up in the streets um a couple guys that you know couldn't get the grades you know mm -hmm. so uh we did make do with what we had though right for sure what was um how was your numbers like at Lakeland mm -hmm. my junior year I was averaging about maybe 13 14 my junior year wasn't starting in the beginning um Coach Jones was my coach that year, man. Uh, wow, wow, God, man. Oh, oh, my God, man. I remember one time he was subbing me in, lifted me up with my jersey and literally threw me to the <laughs> scores table. Man, get in the game. Like, yo, God, dog. Coach, my mom was like, don't you grab my son like that. <laughs> yo, but um, it was, it was, it was different. It was different, man. Um you know, coming from Coach Wall as my JV coach to, you know, Coach Jones as my varsity coach was he wanted more, you know, out of me. You know what I mean? Um, I wish that we really put more time into the off season. You know what I'm saying? Because looking back at it now, those that are going, you know, to the states, mm -hmm. you're going to the regionals, and they're putting in that off season work. Yeah. It, it's not during the season. 
you know what I mean? I look at, you know, um, you know, Kings Four Squad now and um back then, you know, Nasman was the big name in Suffolk, mm-hmm. you know. Um, they was putting in work during the off season. Yeah. Like, man, we at home. <laughs> you you went to Lakeland, <laughs> it was one of those where either you got it going in mm-hmm. or you just you know, you just made the team and you just yeah. you know, talent kinda dwindled away with it. Yeah, you do see now, and you know, I film, so I see like a lot of the off season workout, the coaches that stay in the gym, that got their kids still in the gym, mm-hmm. just throughout the year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the better, the better teams. Yeah, the better teams. Yeah. yeah. Off season work, man, you got, you have to. That's, that's where you get better. So, did AAU ever come into play during this? I played AAU finally. And I said, no one ever told me about this stuff, right? So, I played AAU finally, man. I played with Virginia Wave. And we had a ultimate stack squad. This was my senior year now. Mm -hmm. It was me, BJ Jenkins, uh, Latte. He went to um, Green Run also. A couple cats from some other dudes out Virginia Beach too, man. But we would dog people. Like, I mean, whether it was here, we would go to a tournament in North Carolina and we was smacking people by like 20. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but I never knew about AAU until yeah. then. Until then. So it's like, um, I wish I would have known about it before. Yeah. You know, beforehand, I wish somebody would have put me into it. Um, but once I was finally in it, um, I can see now why it's important. Mm-hmm. It is important, man. That AAU circuit, you know, if you're in the EYBL or anything like that, you on that circuit. But I feel like I feel like it won't as I'm not gonna say as popular. It, I feel like it won't known when our era. It was more of the camps you heard about, correct? So like ABCD camps, night mm-hmm. camps, stuff like that. That was like the thing like that you was the wanted biggest to thing. get invited to. Because I remember, like, we played AAU, but it was like. We wanted to be invited to those camps. To the camps, though. Because they, because that's the camps ranked you, and like, like told people about your skill set. Mm-hmm. Like AAU is kind of like you had to make your own player profile. You mm-hmm. had to get an AAU card. See, <laughs> See I don't even know nothing about that now. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was it was, it was it was it was crazy different. See, yeah, man, like. Then you're right. It was the camp, definitely the Nike camps. I remember hearing about the Nike camps. Um, it was, yeah, it was, yeah, it was. See? Yeah. I, yeah. I just remember, because I remember, because me growing up, I grew up in New York, but then when I moved out here, mm-hmm. I still was focused on, like, Sebastian's health here. Right, so, okay. that was yeah, the guy yeah, in New yeah, York. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I just remember him going to all these camps and everybody talking about him and comparing him with LeBron. He on the cover of the, uh, yeah, I forgot the uh, magazine, but he on the cover with Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was LeBron. it, Slam? I think yeah, it was Slam. Slam mm-hmm. boy, on the cover with Slim. And that was like, oh, we got to get to the Yeah, so camps. it's the camps. I got to get to the camps. I got to get to the camps. See, huh? But, but yeah, that was, and that's when Boo, Boo kind of ran the AU. The AU. Around mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Everybody was kind of like under him. Right, right, yeah. right. And I never, I don't even know, Marky Cook, he was the only one that I knew that actually played, you know, for him. Mm-hmm. That was from Suffolk at the time. Yeah. At the time, man, like no one else, you know, actually played for me. Maybe that was why, you know, because I did grow up and stuff. Maybe that's why I never knew about anything. Nah, that's that's crazy. We uh, we always used to say he ain't show this side of the world. Uh, but I mean, he had some people on his team. Yeah. A sprinkle, yeah, yeah, just to keep y'all satisfied. <laughs> but so, uh, uh, so how what was the furthest y'all went to during your Lakeland career? Every year, uh, my junior and my senior year, man. Um, so that's the Southeastern District, That's right? the Southeastern District, okay. yep. And, it, you know, once again, it was different then, mm-hmm. you know. So um, it wasn't a 1A state champ, 2A state champ, mm-hmm. 3A all the way up to 6A state champ. Yeah, like, everybody. It's one state champ, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't care how small or how big you are, you know, it's only one state champ. So um, then, you know, you get to your district uh, tournament. You win that district tournament, you automatically get a bid Mm -hmm. to the first round of the regionals. You know, Um, we would always win our first round in the district. Mm 
because we was always like top three or top four. Um, back then, you had Nance, man, and they had, oh, man, they had a stack squad. They had Vaughn Wilson at the time. They Wilson had, was so good, oh, bro. Oh, my God, man. He was <laughs> I just remember, animal. I remember him at Virginia Westland. We, had, like, uh, we was watching him play. Huh. The team camp joint. Yeah, he was just... he was he was a tough guard, man. <laughs> he was tough. Yeah, man. They had him. They had Andre. Mm-hmm. Um, then you had uh, you had Nick Wright. Like they had a squad, so mm-hmm. it was always them. Then we would go up against Indian River. Indian River had Frank Sell at the time. I'm like, <laughs> oh god, and then you play goddamn on Deep Creek. Deep Creek got Mike Scott. They got uh, um. Who, was a, they had Crisco one year, man. Like, I mean, they had a squad, you know? So we would always finish, like, fourth every year, you know? So fourth, we playing the fifth fifth seed team, man. All right, cool. We're going to get y'all every time. So we will always get a bid to the first round of the regionals. Boom. Win the first round of the, uh, the district, man, district tournament. Then we end up losing in the second round. But, you know, we in the first round of the regionals. My junior year, we end up playing Woodside. Mm. Woodside in 04, 05. Yeah, that's when they wanted to. Calvin yeah. Baker, <laughs> Stefan Welsh. Yeah. A, a bunch of six, 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 seven cats. Like, um, we get smoked. Mm. 25, 75. Mm. Lose. Damn. 25, 75. <laughs> we go to Woodside, man. Oh. I'm like, yo. Oh, man, I'm feeling good. Like, yo, man, you know, we knocked off. Matter of fact, we ended up beating my junior year. We ended up beating um, Mike Scott and them in the district. We mm-hmm. played them the first round in the district that year. Ended up beating them. I'm feeling good. Like, oh, sh- like, we can do this. Mm-hmm. We get to the first round of the regionals, man. And, like, yo, we got to go to Woodside. Man, it's nothing. Who's Woodside? Never heard of Woodside. Was, it was, I think, I want to say they said it was a new school, like, kind of new school. Oh, where the is newer, it? The newer school. In the oh, out there. I think, you, I think that's what I said. They, that's yeah. probably what it was. So, we go out Newport News, man, and they dusted us. Mm. 75, 25, man. Right? That's I'm, crazy. So, Bad taste in my mouth for the first mm-hmm. round. So junior year go by, come back to my senior year once again. I think we like the fourth seed again, um, coming out of the district. Win the first round of districts, first round of regionals. Now play Booker T. Mm-hmm. It's funny how mm-hmm. both of our first round teams, man, in the regionals end up winning the state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. end up winning the state, <laughs> man. They got Brandon Plummer, Miles Holly, mm-hmm. uh, 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 Antoine Perry, Antoine. Oh. Come on, man. Like, they got a whole squad. Mm-hmm. Ended up beating us again, man. So, um, I like to say we was the definite reason why they won state. We was the lucky chump. <laughs> <laughs> we was the lucky chump, man. But, but yeah, man. So, that was the first time I've ever gotten, man. It was the first round of the regions. Mm. Never got any further than that. So, was you getting any, like, looks through colleges during this, um, during this time? Oh, No. So how did you end up at Shawan? Um, you know what? To this day, I have no clue. I'm thankful <laughs> for it. I'm thankful for it, man. Like he, Coach Tribb, man, was probably um, bar none the best coach that I've ever played for. But I have no clue how he discovered me. Mm. I have no clue. I remember um, once we lost to Booger T, um, my senior year in that first round of the regionals, man. I didn't even know if I was going to ever pick up a ball again, college-wise. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, we go by, and uh, Coach Jones, my uh, high school coach, calls me. He's like, yeah, man, I got a, um, a school that want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Shawan College. So, pause that story right there. <laughs> I remember back my junior year, man, we took a, a business trip, man, with my business class, and we went there. And I remember seeing this college, and I'm like, yo, man, there's no way ever I'm going to come here. <laughs> like, it, it, there's no way ever I'm going to come here, man. Skip back forward a year later, man, and he's sitting at my school offering me a scholarship. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, it's never say what you're never going to do, because you absolutely never know what's going to happen, you know, uh, moving forward. But, um. But yeah, man, he ended up giving me giving me a scholarship, and 
like to this day I have absolutely no clue how he saw me like mm-hmm. absolutely I don't know, no. when, I don't know when I never he say oh, yeah man I came to the games never seen you man I stand <laughs> selfie it's not too many white people that's, yeah. that's coming to our games uh-huh. so it's like man I've, I've never I never saw him um, but but yeah man offered me a, offered me a scholarship and ended up going there and not until my freshman year you know, like in the beginning of the year, man, we play like little scrimmages with, with schools. And we scrimmage Norfolk State. Scrimmage Norfolk State, Echelon, man. And I don't know what big man they had, but we had like a special backdoor play for me. Backdoor, boom, dunked on the big man. After the game, I think they had, I think his name was Coach Blow at the time mm-hmm. that they had um, his coach. He was like, yeah, man, going through the little, um, you know, uh, dapping him up after the game. He was like, yeah, you know, I was going to offer you a scholarship, man. Your, uh, your senior year, but you was a late bloomer. Mm. Late bloomer. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, don't, don't tell me this now, you know. Don't tell me this now, man. So, but, nah, no schools were interested in me, man. Yeah. No schools was interested in me. But, I mean, that was a chip on my shoulder, mm-hmm. you know. Um like I said, thankful for Shawan, thankful, most definitely. Um, God rest his soul, man, Coach uh, Coach Tripp, um, that gave me that scholarship uh, because I think that was, that's what started 2-5, you know, so. so yeah. before, before we get to that. Okay. I didn't even, I, I forgot to mention, what was those Lakeland versus Nazareth <laughs> or Lakeland versus Kings Fort games like? So, Back then, my my junior year, my junior year, Lakeland versus Kingsford, it was nothing. It was nothing. Like I mean, Kingsford was at the bottom of the barrel then. You know? Oh, for real. Yeah. Oh man, they was horrible. They was- I remember <laughs> when I first started recording, they used to wear like suit and ties. Yes, yeah. yes, they did. <laughs> Coach World had them on the suit and ties. It was on there for a long time. I think up until he left. Mm-hmm. Up until he left, man. Until Coach Height came, and then you know now they got kind of a little relaxed with it with the travel suits and stuff, man. But Lakeland Nasman game. That was the top of the top, you know what I'm saying? Like, and back then, like now, it's kind of different. When Lakeland played Nansman, now they let the varsity girls play first, and then the varsity boys play, cause it's that big of an atmosphere. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, back then, it was you know Lakeland boys JV play, play, then the varsity play. How you know it normally goes? So me JV. Full pack, like gym, man, like wall to wall, crazy. Like that was the ultimate robbery game. Never beat them. <laughs> Never beat them. They beat me at, oh my God, man. They beat me every single year. Um, I, We got them one time, JV, but no one counts. I count them. Yeah. That's, 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 that's a dub. That's a dub. But, um, but yeah, man, that was the the ultimate game, man. It didn't it didn't matter if you was playing at Lakeland or if you was playing at you know at Nansman, like it was still wall to wall. It was still wall to wall, man. And if you ain't get there by halftime of the JV game, I hope you know somebody that know somebody. Yeah. You ain't getting in because you ain't getting in, man. But those games was definitely, definitely off the chain for sure, for sure. That's what's up. <laughs> So fast forward, you say you get to Shawan freshman year. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, one of my friends from Tallwood went there. His name was uh, Chris Keenan. <laughs> my guy. Chris Keenan, the rapper <laughs> demon. That's my, my guy. guy. <laughs> my guy. My so guy. So when you get to Shawan, what was your first like? You get there. What's there? Oh man, I get there, <laughs> and honestly, we had a bigger enrollment at Lakeland than we did at Shawan. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you get the, you know, Shawan, I mean, kind of everybody know everybody. Mm-hmm. It's a small town. You can't get in any trouble. It's, you can't. It's nothing to do. You know what I'm saying? So, um, it kept me focused, you know, on the goal, which was basketball at the point. But um, it was good times, though, man. You know, <laughs> it was good times. Um it was different when it came down because we, once again, going back to Lakeland, we didn't have no off-season, pre-season workouts, anything like that. Yeah. You get there in August, man, shoot. Oh, we get to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We out running around, you know, in the neighborhoods, man, and they got hills up and down. You put in like three miles, you know what I'm saying? So um, 
it was different coming in, you know, as a freshman and really trying to make your stamp on, like, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I think I, in the beginning, I couldn't play the first two games. Um, I, what was it, the college board or whoever does, like, the SAT scores. Mm -hmm. So, um go back to when I was in Echewan, you know, they offered me the scholarship, but you had to get a 710 on your SATs. Mm -hmm. So the first time I took my SAT, um, I think I got like a, like a 650, 660, something like that. So um, had to take it again. I took it again. And the second time I took it, I got like a 1100. Mm. If you jump 300 points, yeah, they like investigate it. They red flag it. Uh -huh. So, Red flagged it. They said that, oh, yeah, he was cheating off a white girl in front of him. So, <laughs> okay. All right, cool. So, um, they called me. It's like maybe two or three days away from my first game of the year. Now, I'm at Shawan. Yeah. Right? So, coach calls me into the office. He's like, yeah, you know, um, the college board said, you know, they red flagged your SAT scores. Um, you got to take your SAT again. So, you're not going to be able to play. I think we went on a, a away trip, man. Um, you ain't going to be able to play the first two games. Okay. All right. Whatever. That's cool. Like, you want me to take it again? That's fine. I'll take mm -hmm. it again. Ended up having to go back to Lakeland. Um, took it again. I got higher mm -hmm. than what I did when I took it the second time. So, I didn't join the team until probably the, the third or fourth game. Mm -hmm. You know, coming back. But... Um, shoot, after that, man, it was, we in the ground running now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We in the ground running now, <laughs> man, you know. And I mean, they said, I mean, looking at your stats, you would, I mean, you put in work from the day you started there. I mean, you almost, for your season, I mean, for your average total four years there, it was, you almost averaged a double-double. <laughs> it was it was a was it easy was it easy? not at all man uh -huh. not at all and we didn't have like 24 access to the gym mm. you know when we was there they would lock the gym as soon as we ended practice at like maybe yeah, nine so crazy, yeah. you couldn't get into the gym so what you're giving me flashbacks <laughs> oh my god man imagine i went to a d3 school imagine having a girls team better than your team oh bro <laughs> I mean, you try to use ah. the gun machine and be like, I'm not opening the gym for I'm you. I'm not opening the gym for you, man. Like, <laughs> like, you couldn't even get better. They wouldn't even allow you to get better. You ain't even going to allow me to get better, man. So, I realized it was a back door, man. Mm -hmm. If you hit it hard enough, lean into it, put a little umph in it, you could open it. And there was no security system or anything like that. So, me and... um couple of the guys, man, we would go in there 10, 11 o'clock at night, get some shots up. And the good thing about it, it was like a skylight, so they never left, like, the lights on or anything like that. But we had, like, skylights inside of the gym, so we would light it up, like, just enough mm -hmm. for you to see. But, man, I would be in there at least three, four nights out of the week. You know what I'm saying? Going in, sneaking into the gym, trying to get some shots up, getting better. Um, Chris. My guy now. Love him to death. <laughs> Love him to death, man. I used to think Chris hated me my freshman year, bro. Yeah. Hey, I used to think, like, yo, bro, like, why are you always giving me a hard time, bro? You know what I'm saying? Um, he's another definite inspiration, man. You know, he was another guy. He just wanted you to be better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it's, nothing's going to be given to you with Chris on the court. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I don't care what... Other people are coach saying like, oh, yeah, this guy's going to be good coming in. Like, nah, you got to prove it to Chris. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that definitely helped out, man. But that freshman year was, it was tough. It was tough, man. Um, trying to, you know, come to a new team. And then you got, I think that year our recruitment class was like, we had like 10 different recruits, man. Mm. All of them coming to the team. So going through the preseason uh, workouts and shooting drills and one-on-one -on -one drills, man. Like, we all compete for a spot now, yeah. you know. So um, it was tough, man. It was tough. But um, luckily, 
he was able to get through it. And shout out Chris Kane. He 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 the reason <laughs> he the reason like all the Tallwood people after him started shooting better. Oh, he led like the like the beach and like threes made and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't even know that myself. Oh, no, no, no. He he was a three point shooter. That was like him, you know. And that's he. he yeah. I give him. He that. told us he do like when he used to shoot. He used to bounce. Was the bounce? Yes. <laughs> and we all, we all started doing that. Shit. And I used to see him when he he used to knock him down. Like yes. it didn't matter from where. But yes. I'm like, yo, man, why you always bounce after you shoot it, man? Like, does that help the ball go in or something, bro? We like, all started doing that because of him, bro. That Jay was crazy. Uh, well, but I remember us going on a visit because I went on a visit there with Darius and. Um, the coach ain't like me, but he like Darius. And uh, I think they had just moved from like D3 to D2, mm-hmm. right? Like just recently. Like, yep. That was yep. Man, that's what's up, man. Yeah, man. That's that's wild. Wow. Well, wow. What was that? I mean, what was that like playing collegiate basketball? Especially you coming from and you not playing AAU like that. You're not you becoming a late bloomer, as they right. say. Like, what was that? Like, I got a full scholarship to play basketball, man. Scholarship to play basketball, man. It it was a shock. Mm. Um, traveling with a team, you know, workouts, uh, in between your classes now on a collegiate level, man. Um, it was a shock, man, in the, in the beginning. In the beginning. Um, I almost actually flunked off the team. My my sophomore year, you know, um, not going to class because now I mean, shoot, you want to go to class, you ain't got to go to class, right. you know. So it was it was different, man. You know, going back to the dorm, you know, um, back then we didn't really have, we weren't in the city, like I said, it was yeah. complete rural mm-hmm. like era um, area. So it was, um, we used to call them shindigs, man, you know. <laughs> Somebody got a house party. Are we going to the shindig? You know, mm-hmm. so um, you wake up. You got an eight o'clock class, man. It was like forget the eight o'clock class. I ain't going to eight o'clock class. You know, so um, after my uh, sophomore year, man, it, it kind of woke me up. You know, like I right, cool. okay, cool, man. We need to really get this thing on on a handle, man, and figure out what's going on. But um, after that, I would say my junior year, going into my junior year, man, it was now you. All American, and you a preseason All American, mm-hmm. and you know um, we got a chance of you know going into the CIAA next year. So it was more of a expectation, like I I, I have to live up to this expectation mm-hmm. now. So um, it, it it definitely helped me, you know, get my head on head on right as far as you know. Make sure my grades is right, man, because you need to make the grades. Like, shoot. Yeah. Ain't no court. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Ain't no basketball, I, le- I learned that my freshman year at Tallwood because getting grades were on a big thing in, like, like New York in school. But right. It was like, you do work. Like, you a hooper and you do work. <laughs> and you like, do work. <laughs> you a, oh, so you really a student yeah, athlete. Yeah, like. okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was different. Hey, hey, see? But... You know, and that's what I try to, you know, tell Kaz now, man, like, bro, like, you a student athlete, man. You a student first before you're an athlete, dude. So, if you ain't doing this work in the class, bro, like, sh- you can kiss that hardwood goodbye. Yeah, I've seen a lot of kids, if they ain't doing what they're doing on the classroom, and they just, just getting by, but they balling on the court. You see them go to them D2 schools, mm-hmm. them D3 schools, and them JUCOs, and they get kind of forgotten about. Forgotten about, man. Man, because it's... It's, they, they, I, I, I feel like they forget it's, it's plenty of yous out there. For sure. You got to be super special to be that one, man. <laughs> and that's hard. That is difficult. It is hard. Like, I didn't I didn't seen a kid from, what's his name again? Travis Fields. Yeah. He was killing everybody out here. Absolutely everybody. Everybody out here. And mm-hmm. he went to a mid-major school. Mid-major school. You know what I'm saying? And then kids think they better than that. It was like... He won three state championships in a row. In a row. And he's demolishing all of y'all. And he went to a mid major D one. And you think you going to To like what? Kansas. Yeah. Duke. No, no. No, sorry. no, no, no. <laughs> Come in, let me talk to you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Come in, yeah. let me talk to you, man. But yeah, you yeah, if you don't got them grades, man, and 
is is nothing that a school can do if you ain't got a grip. Like, mm-hmm. what can I do? So you're getting all these accolades at Shawan. Um, what's the furthest you went at Shawan? And I know you say you didn't uh, off the camera. You say you didn't get to play against Marquis Cook. Uh, now. He's at Elizabeth State, right? Elizabeth State or Elizabeth City? Elizabeth City. Elizabeth yep. City. He's at Elizabeth City you State University. You're at Siobhan. Y'all get to play against each other. Oh, man. That was, was like, that like, that was the talk of the town. Mm. That was talk of the town back in Suffolk, man. Like, for sure. Because, like I said, like, I never got a chance to play against him um, in high school. Uh, his senior year, I was playing JV. But I always looked up to him. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, fast forward to, um, you know, my senior year. And then we can play him. I get a chance to like play Marquis Cook. Like, oh shoot! Like, the whole town is talking about it. Mm-hmm. Go back home, get a haircut. Cause I always used to come back home. <laughs> I always used to come back home, man. Come back home, get a haircut, and they're like, yeah, man. You know, you play Cook tomorrow, man. What you gonna do? So, man, we get in that game. Score thirty one. Mm-hmm. Score thirty one, man. Um, but I felt like. They kind of kept him on a chain, cause I it's it's funny like I I know what your potential is, you know what I'm saying? Like I mean, sh- like you went to went to Tech. I seen mm-hmm. you go up against JJ Reddick. Like I've seen you like demolish cats, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So it's like I think the coach kind of kept him on a leash, but at the same token, I had 31, you know. So, um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man, it was it was kind of like a okay cool you see somebody that you idolized as uh somebody in high school man and now you're able to kind of get over mm-hmm. you know that mountaintop man and it's like oh shoot like all right cool like i can get used to this mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying so um that game was it was a big game in my eyes it was a big game in my eyes personally um just to be able to get over that hump, man, of somebody that you idolize and now, you know, um, I can knock you off, mm-hmm. so to speak, you know what I'm saying? Um, but hell of a talent, though. Yeah. <laughs> hell of a talent, man. When like, I first moved there, that's all they talked about was John Yukas and Marky Cook. And Marky Cook. It was like, <laughs> it was like that was the pinnacle. Yes. So. That's, it, it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, this is, this is where you need to be. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So it was... It was like, man, all right, cool. So, Marky Cook is here. Like, I just need, I got to get there. I got to get there. You know, I got to get to the mountaintop, man. But, but yeah, he was he was a hell of a talent, man. I remember all the time, once I got to Shawan, um, bragging about him, you know. Um, once I was there, man, like, man, shoot, man, I went up. Man, you ain't got nobody from Suffolk, man. Shit, we got Marky Cook. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm putting him on the map. Like, we got Marky Cook, bro. So, um, he was definitely, uh, you know, someone that uh, I looked up to. Absolutely. Uh, coming up. That's what's up. <laughs> so, what, what's the furthest y'all went in Shawan? Oh. The furthest we went was... We had the best opportunity, man. We was probably picked to win that national championship, I would say, my junior year. Sophomore year. Sophomore year. And the game before we went to the tournament, I broke my foot. Mm. Broke my foot, man. Um, but we had a absolute monster squad. Um, me... Uh, Lando Morrison played a tab. We had Chris Keenan, um, Aaron Scott. I used to call him 20 and 20. Like, he'd give you 20 points in 20 minutes. Mm. He was just a heat wave, man. Um, uh, Montino out of Richmond. Um, but ended up breaking my foot going into that tournament, man. And, oh. I remember breaking down crying in the doctor's office because I did. I was, I knew something was wrong with my foot. Like when I went to push off, the guy kind of pushed me in my back, and all of the weight just went to the front of my foot, and I ended up breaking my um, the fifth metatarsal or something like that, what they call it, um, 
I tried to walk on that thing for like three days, man. Like, nah, you know, it ain't broke. <laughs> it ain't broke. Trainer did some kind of little whatever she do to kind of check to see if it was broken. She told me it wasn't broken. And after my second day limping around, my mom was just like, nah, man, like, we got to go to the doctor. Took me to the doctor. Yeah, Miss Nelson right here, man. Um, it's broke. Yeah. Broke down, started crying, man. And I think that was the best chance that I would have ever had of getting a ring in college, mm -hmm. for sure. Because then we were still NAI. Oh, we okay. weren't quite, we weren't D2 yet. Okay. We were still at NAI school my sophomore year. So um, the competition that they went through the year before, we would have, yeah, I knew for sure we would have we beat them. Yeah. We would have beat them, man. But, um, so yeah, that, that was the furthest that I've ever been. When we got to the uh, CIAA my senior year, then we got to the, the semifinals of the CIAA uh, conference tournament. Um, but that was it. That was it, though. I think my sophomore year, that would be it. Though. That was like a thing like to go to. I feel like back then. Yes. Everybody, I know all my friends used to go, like, we're going to CIAA. And like, that was like what you went to. The CIAA, man. I only played in it one year, my senior year. Um, we were supposed to join the league or join the conference my junior year, but uh, they was I didn't know that you could put different sports in different conferences mm -hmm. at a college. So I think like the baseball team went, and I don't know. I think the 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 football team went, um, but the basketball team didn't go. Mind you, like. In my mind, we're the best sport yeah. here. <laughs> so if if we not going, nobody should go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, so uh, we didn't get into it my junior year. My senior year, man, the CIAA changed my whole outlook on the HBCU. I wish I would have went to an HBCU. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere, the, uh, um, the level of competition, man, that was in the CIAA every single game was off the charts yeah. was off the charts man um i remember when we went to um we went to uh, uh johnson c smith and they got the band playing they got like everybody in a crowd it was just like everybody used to come to the games and i'm like yo first game of the season i'm like man like this what the ciaa is about oh man yeah hey I should have went to an HBCU. Mm -hmm. Like, seriously, man. But, but yeah, man, the CIA, and I tell cats that now, man, like, if you, <clears throat> if you go in D2, man, CIAA is, like, one of the top conferences in the D2 conference, you know? So, that's honestly where, where you need to be. You know what I'm saying? But it was, it, it was tough. It was tough, man. Absolutely. But, did, did that make, I know you pledged, did that make you want to pledge, like, knowing that? I wish I would have pledged in college. Honestly. <laughs> oh, you pledged after? I pledged after. Oh, okay. I pledged yeah. after, man. So, once again, you go to predominantly white, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, college. Um, then they didn't have uh, fraternities. Okay. Um, I think my, uh, after I had did my four years, um, and I still had to go for another semester uh, just to, you know, get my uh, degree or whatnot. But that's when they had first got... Uh, I think it was the Deltas came first, mm -hmm. you know, and then slowly but surely, you know, they got the Qs, they got, you know, the Kappas, you know, and um, I wish I would have been able to play as in college, so. That's what's up, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know you said you did that, you had to do that extra semester. Mm -hmm. um, I did a little research, and during that time, I know they say you was going to school, Going back and forth to school from, say <laughs> <laughs> so you was going back and forth from school from Suffolk to Shawan <laughs> to take classes. You was coaching. You was helping to coach Kings oh, Ford, man. and yeah. then you was on the ABA. You was playing for ABA team. The what the uh the seven uh, city the seven, night the seven city night. <laughs> yeah. How was you doing that, man? That it was tough. That was tough, man. You know. Going from here to Murfreesboro, it's not far, but it's far if you're going every day. Yeah. That's an hour and a half drive, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, going there in the morning, I would get up, maybe like 6.30, 7. 
go ahead, boom, hit the road, go to North Carolina. Um, I was taking two classes, two classes a day. Um, go ahead, do those two classes, man. I was done maybe like one thirty or something like that. Luckily, um, I had friends and everything that stayed out there. Um, my boy Chuck, uh, whom I played with my senior year, he had a house out there. Um, the girl that I was dating at the time, she had a house out there. So I didn't have to come back, you know, every day. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I was playing ABA too. So we got practice that night. Now I got to go out here one thirty. Cool. Got to come back home. If we had a practice at, I was helping uh, Coach World at Kings Fork at the time. So we had practice at Kings Fork. All right, cool. Now I got to swing by here, 3.30, 5.30. I got my own practice at 6.37. Out, um, I think we was practicing at the Navy base um, then for Seven City Nights. Man, now I got to go out here. But that day was, man, stupid long. Mm -hmm. Stupid long, man. Um, luckily, I had, you know, some professors that was, you know, kind of lenient with me, you know, going back and forth, had uh, coaches, uh, my coach, Coach Pons, man, um, that was uh, lenient with me, you know, late to practice or something like that, uh, showing up, um, but it was difficult, looking back at it now, man, I don't know how the hell I did that, yeah. that was, it was, it was difficult, driving. man, a lot of driving, I put a lot of miles on that 96 what, legs. What made you that dedicated to everything? Oh, I knew that I still wanted to. I didn't know then that I would take basketball any further. I didn't know. So um, uh, when I played my last game in that CIAA tournament and we ended up losing, I'm like, man, shoot, I don't know if I'm going to play anymore. But I knew I wanted to still be around the game. You know what I mean? So um, that's why I joined the ABA. That's why I wanted to still coach. Um, but... I would have never known that it would have ended up turning out, you know, the way it did from yeah. that. Yeah, because you, know what you wind up what you wind up get some good looks and you go overseas, right? Right. So what was that like? How was that being that agent? I know. Um, I hear some scary stories <laughs> getting get scammed for some money, uh, and then you hear the good stories also. So Absolutely. What was, so what was your experience like? Um. So. My senior year, um, going back, Coach Tripp, his contract was up. Um, they didn't, you know, um, renew it. Renew his contract, or anything, man, which was, you know, that's crazy, but that's another story for another time. Um, so we got a new coach to come in. Um, they had an assistant coach, man, Coach James Simpkins. Um, and he actually, uh, he knew about me from the year prior. Remember, I'm, now I'm on campus, but mm -hmm. now I'm just a student. Yeah. So um, he asked me, you know, like, you know, well, what you doing? You know, um, I told him I was playing in the ABA at the time. And he said, you know, well, you know, I'm a, I got some guys, you know, connections overseas, man. I'm going to get you overseas. Everybody said that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Like, you know, and I just kept it moving, you know. Um, so fast forward, you know, I graduate. Um, and he stayed true to his word. He stayed true to his word, man. Um he was actually able to get me uh, a contract playing in Kosovo, and that really jump started um, my overseas career. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was a, uh, it wasn't as high level as it is now. You know, you see a lot of uh, good competition now going to to Kosovo, um, but uh, it was like a, you know, it's a third world country. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Uh, can't really talk to you know my family anything like that yeah. so it was it was different but if it was not for him staying true to his word like oh man I probably would have never it would have been stopped it would have been over <laughs> I've been a coach <laughs> what was that like you getting overseas what was that experience like third world country worse, I, worse than something man oh my <laughs> oh man it's 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 difficult D like. It it takes a different type of not even I'm not even talking about player wise like competition wise it takes mentally, a different yeah. mentally emotionally, man yeah. emotionally dude like it it takes a toll on you it takes a toll on you man like playing overseas and definitely if you have uh, kids a wife mm. or something back home I've seen grown men like cry. Mm. 
that's some birthday and they can't be there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that first year over there for me, like, I mean, I mean, I don't have any kids, mm-hmm. anything like that, but just I'm real tight, close niche with my family, you know? So being away from them was tough. It was tough, man. Um, so now all I have to lean on is teammates. Um, didn't have another American on my team, mm-hmm. right? So now um, if I do meet someone that speaks my language, it's broken. Yeah, You know, it's broken language, you know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't really know uh, a lot about the culture, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So um, it was different, man. Um, luckily... Um, I had a uh, real tough uh, guard that I was cool with, man, uh, Drilling Harizi. Um, we became real close. Became real close, man. Um, he was kind of able to, you know, all right, cool, man. We got to get you out of the house. Let's do something else other than just going to practice. Because that was all I was doing. Yeah, just going to practice. Just going to practice, going man. Going to practice you know? games. It's it's so much downtime. And I think that's what drives people crazy when you're yeah. overseas. I mean, it's so <laughs> much downtime, man. Like, it's only so much basketball I can do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we go to practice. All right, cool. That's two hours. Come back home. We might have a second practice. All right, cool. That's a shoot around. Maybe an hour and a half. Well, it's like, you know, 12 active hours left in the day. Like, what am I going to do? Mm. So I was just sitting in the room, mm. you know, watching TV, or uh, you know, doing something. So he was the one to act. All right, man, come on, man. You got to get out. You got to get out, man. So once I was actually able to get out, and you actually, you know what I mean, indulge yourself in the culture, man. Like, hey, now you're able to actually have a good time with it overseas. I feel you. So what, how many uh, countries did you uh, hoop in? How many seasons? Uh, so I played six seasons. Okay. I played six seasons, man. Um, played in Kosovo um, for two. Um, after Kosovo, after that first year, man, we, run, we won the cup and the championship my first year over there. Okay. And bounced around in South America, played in Uruguay, played in Ecuador, and I played in Chile. Okay. And played in Chile. And I, I did a tour um, in China, um, a little basketball tour that they had out there, man. So I did that. But um, so about five, six countries. So would you, would, do you feel like you had a good experience? Out Great there? experience. Yeah. I wish I would have did more. Mm-hmm. And this is one thing that I would tell cats that do want to go, you know, overseas, man. Like, really enjoy where you're at. You know what I'm saying? Seize the mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. Seize the moment when you're there, man. Because you don't see a lot of people saying, like, yeah, you know, I took a vacation to China. I took a vacation to, you know, uh, Uruguay, South America. Yeah. So, man, take it all in while you're there. I wish I would have did more. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? As far as like really getting out and venturing and, you know, acting like a tourist while I was there, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And not just a basketball <laughs> player, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, um, I, I'm i definitely grateful, you know, for the opportunities. Absolutely. That's dope. That's dope. So what made you stop going over there? I know you had kids or whatever, but I don't know when, yeah. I don't know when that came into play. But So actually I stopped playing. Before, before um, I had, uh, before me and my wife had our first kid, man, okay. um, it's cutthroat overseas. You know what I mean? I know um, you get hurt. Man, you get hurt? Oh, oh you hurt? <laughs> oh, you hurt? All right, hey, hey, man, look, man, we need a replacement guard. And it was like, man, um, my, I think this is my second time around in Kosovo. Um, I had just finished playing in, in Chile. And I had fractured my, it wasn't like a big fracture, but I had fractured my shin, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, But they was giving me an opportunity to go out there. So I'm like, all right, cool. Man, money's good. So let's go. Mm -hmm. So I get there. And at the time, the rules have changed now. So now, instead of you having, um, you know, one domestic uh, or one international player, Mm -hmm. then you have three. Mm -hmm. So we had three Americans. So in my mind, I'm like, man, I can hide the injury. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I got the other guys. Like, y'all can just go ahead and take over, you know? Um, one game, went to take off, and the guy just straight undercuts me. Mm. And 
you know, me favoring my left shin, trying to give it a break, um, I come down and my knee just goes back entirely too far. Mm. Boom, real quick. And this was like the most pain that I've ever felt like in my life. I look back and I see the video and I'm like clenching one of the fans leg like this is killing me. Yeah. Ended up tearing my meniscus. Mm. Um, and after that, it was like, no one's going to pick you up now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's time to turn, turn the chapter. You know what I mean? Let's turn this page, man, on to the next chapter. So after that year, um, I still actually went back overseas. So I came back home that summer, um, rehabbed. Um, you know, got better. Still, I'm I'm kind of a shell of myself, but uh, let's just give it another go. Went back overseas again to the team that I was with in Chile, and it was a no go. Mm-hmm. It was a no go, man. I think I probably played maybe a quarter of the season before um, the doctor uh, realized that not only was I still suffering from the meniscus, but the fracture that I had. I got worse, mm-hmm. you know. So um, after that, it was all right, cool, man. The the air in this ball is is slowly dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. So I got to turn this page. So um, ended up uh, coming home. I think this was like 2016, 2016. Came mm-hmm. home, man, and um, yeah, started uh, started working, man. Started teaching, mm-hmm. started teaching at the high school, man, and. Um, uh, as as much as I wanted to keep playing, mm-hmm. um, I knew that it was all right, cool, man. It's it, it's time. At least you tasted it. I tasted it. Yeah, I tasted it, man. <laughs> Absolutely, I tasted it. You know, so um, it's crazy how many people like get hurt overseas. Do they like just play harder or something? Man, or they, do they just don't uh, like. I don't know if the it's USA. Like, Players, so they just go at them. I'm going at. I'm going at them. I'm going at them, man. I think it's something. You know, you you see somebody in the gym, and you know this dude has you know played overseas, played in the NBA, and they come into the gym, and I'm just a round the town type of guy. I got something to prove, mm-hmm. and I think that's what a lot of them feel there. You know, what I mean, I'm a domestic player here. They got this international player here. I right, cool. I got something to prove. Mm-hmm. And they're willing to do whatever. Mm-hmm. Don't care. Undercut, mm-hmm. hit you with a cheap blow. Um, just, just here recently. I mean, you know, Frank just got hurt. Yeah, overseas. I saw that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Guy just like blatantly had a boom <clears throat> in the head. Like, dude, like, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you yeah, doing, man? Crazy. So, I, I mean, I don't know if it's a they just wild because it's some cats that understand the game, but it's some dudes that just don't care. Mm-hmm. They just don't care. And you can see the same case here, too. You know, we go into the gym there, into our open gym. There's certain dudes in there that, oh, shoot, oh, they didn't hit. All right, cool. I got something I got to prove. You know, and they just playing wild and reckless, man. So you just got to be careful. You just got to be careful. So you get back. You say you're teaching. Yep. Um, But that's not the end of your basketball career. Maybe Mm -hmm. overseas. Right. So... I think this is around the time I first started to get to know you, and that was through uh, Bull Aaron mm-hmm. Brown. Uh, he used to just be like, "Bro, we gotta get a Janelle. We gotta get Janelle." I'm like, "Who the <laughs> fuck is Janelle?" Like, but then, like, I look at uh, uh, the VA Hoop League, and I'm seeing like one person in all of all the, <laughs> all the championship pictures, and I'm like, "Yo." <laughs> Who is this? The unsung hero. Yeah, I'm like, who is this? And I'm like, okay. I'm like, whatever. And I'm like, let's do it. And then that's, I feel like that's when I first met you. And then, right. like, I call you Mr. Win a Championship in every city. <laughs> Suffolk League. Championship. Championship, championship. Norfolk League. Championship. VA Hoop League multiple times. Mm-hmm. Pro-Am. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And then I know you play a lot of uh, the PBA, ABA. Mm-hmm. What What are those like? Because I know the PBA got some weird rules. Is it, 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 
<laughs> what was it like playing? And I know you went to the Richmond Elite first, right? Yep. So I went to Richmond Elite first. Um, once I got back, um, my guy, um, Ant, Anthony Wayne, man from Richmond, um, he played with me in the uh, for Seven City Knights. Mm-hmm. So he would come from Richmond down to Suffolk. So once I got back and he found out that I was back, he was like, "Hey, man, like." You gotta return the favor. Like I came from Richmond to, mm-hmm. you know, down there to you. You gotta come from from Suffolk to, you know, to Richmond. So, um, I still had, you know, that burning desire. We don't ever lose that, you know, to yeah. still play, you yeah. know. So I'm like, all right, cool, man. I go up there playing in the ABA, um, but the rules are definitely different. Mm-hmm. For sure, man. You I'm just saying, y'all be having like 57 <laughs> points, <laughs> 38. I'm like, dang, like eight people it really in double is, figures. What it, is going it's, on? It's different, man. It's <laughs> different. And I had to adjust to it. I, I remembered them from, you know, the beginning when I was playing with the Seven City Knights, man. Mm-hmm. Um, but, y'all, oh, man, you can have a smooth 50 in the ABA. Mm-hmm. Like, for sure, man, with the different kind of rules that they got. Like, if you get a steal in the backcourt, yeah. And let's say, um, boom, I get a steal in the backcourt, and we call it a 3D light. So basically, it's one point extra mm-hmm. for whatever. You make a two-pointer, it's a three-pointer. Man. You make a three-pointer, it's a four-pointer. Man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the rules were different. So, um, But we had a squad in Richmond Elite, man. Um, it was every, if not every year, man, we was winning um, our division. For sure, that was that was by far um, what messed me up down the stretch with Richmond Elite was the year that I know for sure we were supposed to win. My little man was about to hit the world, and mm-hmm. I couldn't miss it. Yeah. I couldn't miss it, man. So um, they was actually gonna fly me out. I think they was playing in like Louisiana or something, man. Um, they was gonna fly me out there. Uh, the next game that they had, but they ended up losing that game before, mm. you know, and he ended up coming like maybe two or three days later, but I couldn't miss it. I can't no, no, no. I can't go, yeah. man. I, I can't I, go. I know the feeling. Yeah, I can't go, man. I got to stay home. I got to stay home, man. But, um, yeah, playing in the ABA um, was was different, man. Playing with Richmond Elite. Um, shout out to, you know, Miss P, Miss um, Patterson, man, the president. Of that club, uh, she definitely was one of a kind for sure, you know. Um, but but we had a squad. Oh man, we had a squad, bro. So how many years did you play with them? Um, ooh, I think I played maybe like four or five seasons. Yeah, because I felt like you was there for a while, was, and then yeah. you decided to make the um the vets team. Right. Before y'all started, the, they started that team out here. Started the vets out here, man. Um, what was that experience like? I know it, it was short lived. It was short lived, and I wish it would have been, you know, longer. Cause I mean, we had, in my mind, the best of the best talent, man. Mm-hmm. You know, that was still home, other than yeah. the guys that you know that was overseas or something like that, man. We had, we had a tough squad. We had a tough squad, man. Um, we actually ended up playing Richmond Elite. And um, I think we only lost to them. Mind you, they, you know, go into the Final Four and the ABA, mm-hmm. and they have all of these accolades, and we lost to them by three. By about three, man. I mean, so, I mean, we had a, <laughs> a monster squad, yeah. you know. Um, and I I wish it could have went further, but, I mean, unforeseen circumstances, you yeah. know, happened. And, <laughs> you know, the team kind of, you know, went its, went its own way. I, I mean, they still are going on now. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, a couple of the guys are still around, um, which is good um, for the area, yeah, honestly. Yeah. Uh, having some kind of bridge for guys that are coming out of the collegiate level and you still, you know, want to play and have aspirations to play overseas. Like, cool, this is this bridge right here, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, And I tell people that all the time. If it wasn't for um, that ABA, you know, keeping me in shape before I actually went overseas, like, I mean, it could have been a totally different story. Could have been a totally different story, man. So having that that bridge there to kind of bridge that gap in between the collegiate level and, you know, you going overseas, are playing, you know, on a higher level. Like, yo, this is where it's at. Mm. This is where it's at. Where you're gonna see some some big time competition, man, for sure. Mm. So you 
y'all get done with that, uh, and y'all, whatever happened, happened, and y'all decide to make your own team, Jimmy Podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How would that go? Because I know you was like, I know you and Tree was like, because you played it and you knew, like, I guess, I don't know, you knew what what it takes. What it takes. To, what it takes. To absolutely. Work. Yeah. Absolutely. So how is that like making your own team and how does that work with the ABA, all that stuff? Um, so Tree, Tree, man, honestly, man, Tree is the catalyst of mm -hmm. Virginia Beach Wildcats, you know, um, if it wasn't for him, you know, and his vision and him actually being at the forefront of that, um, uh, Virginia Beach Wildcats wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I remember uh, me, him, and uh, Aaron having a conversation one night at um, at my house about us getting together and starting a team. And uh, moving forward with it was, it was different because I knew that it would be kind of, I don't want to say bad blood, but, you know, it's kind of that rift in between the Virginia Beach Wildcats and them, uh, mm. you know, the yeah. vets, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Um, having some guys now from that team, and then, you know, we took some guys from that team, and now they're on our team, man. It was, it was funny. Mm -hmm. It was funny, man. But um, starting a team and, you know, putting it into the ABA and having something that you can actually, you know, call your own, that you can say that you made was, was big, man. But... If it wasn't for Tree, man, honestly, he was the catalyst of it. He was the catalyst of it, man. And I remember <laughs> uh, the Hoop League, not last year, but the year before. I want to say this was what? So that was 2021. 20, and we got a chance to play him. And it was like this big thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> it was this big thing, yo. You got the yeah, Wildcats yeah. going up against the Vets, you know. Cats playing for the team that they just played against. Mm -hmm. You know, um, but at the end of the day, man, I think, I mean, you know, you leave all of that stuff on the court. You know what I'm saying? So um, you get off the court, man, and I see, you know, Miles Howley. I see Fish. I see, you know, any of the guys. Marquee Cook. Like, I mean, you still my guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So um, I definitely look back, and I, I think if, if it was able to work, you know, with the vets collectively as a whole, um, we've been a powerhouse. Mm. We've been a powerhouse, man, for sure, for sure. And then between all of this, the TBT, the <laughs> TBT that that probably was like one of the big things. They did the Elam, and then never seen that before. Mm. That was like a big thing, and y'all got the chance to Virginia, what Virginia team seventh. Hampton Road team, I would say. Right. Seven Cities Grand. Seven City Grand. Seven what was City that Grand. like, man? I know that wasn't a good experience. Oh, man. The, first, two, the first one was 2017. First one was 2017. Yes. Mm -hmm. First one was 17. Um, and it was different then because in order for you to get your team in it, all you needed was votes. Yeah. You know, so you just had to get, you know, people from around your area just to vote. So, mind you, I'm in the school now. I'm in yeah. school since I'm teaching. <laughs> so, I'm getting all, hey, look, man, you want an extra grade? Look, man, go ahead. We'll go into this link, you know, vote for the team. Um, but the team that we had, man, I, I, I honestly felt that we had, like, some top-tier guys, you know, no, like, good, in the man. area, man. Like, that was the year. That was the year. That was the year. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, had we had, I think, when it comes down to you got two powerhouse teams, right? Player for player on each team, they going head for head. They match. Mm -hmm. The difference between these teams is going to be the coach. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a coach. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um we had basically our general manager who, you know, put put everything together and he had stepped in as our coach. And my boy, uh, you know, I think Montana was um, coaching that year too. But I think if we had had, you know, a coach that was holding cats accountable, mm -hmm. drawing up some X's and O's, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and really was tactical and strategic with their shit, like... It would have been a done deal. Oh, yeah, yeah. It would have been a done deal, man. Um, yeah, it was cool. And, and y'all almost had the game. I remember I, I watched it back. Uh, you can't, I think you get the dunk the, yeah. in the like, third quarter. 
And I'm like, we going crazy because we watching everybody in the city. Watching. Everybody in the city watching. Everybody in the city watching. Everybody in the city watching. Everybody in the you city get the watching, dunk, man. you go crazy. The other team call a timeout. We like, oh yeah, they got that. I'm like, man, we got it. We got it. It goes downhill from and there. Complete downhill. Yeah. Complete downhill, man. And I'm just like, yo, it can go from. Top 10 where you feeling like shit, man. We mm-hmm. might as well just get ready for the next round to what the fuck just happened? Yeah. Like, did we really just lose this game? And I remember coming off the goddamn on court. We would have played overseas elite the next round. Mm-hmm. And the guard for overseas elite was like, man, I'm glad y'all lost. There's no <laughs> way we was going to beat y'all. I'm glad y'all lost. Because I think their big man, whoever their big man was, man, he wasn't even there. Mind mm-hmm. you, we had, man. Yeah, Denzel Bones. Yeah, Denzel. Frank Casale. And I best of the best. We have Ricardo Radley. If I'm like, I don't even think Denzel played a lot. He did not play. Yeah, a lot. he played a lot. No, no. And I wish he would have played more. I wish he would have played more, man. But you know, we definitely had a score. We had some big names. We had some big names, man. I wish we could have had some other cats on the team that year. Um, but for whatever reason, you know. Mm. They couldn't get picked up for whatever reason, man, and 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 that's that shit haunts me now. <laughs> that shit haunts me now, man. You know especially what I'm saying? For money. Especially then, when you're playing for money. <laughs> especially, man. And then what? 2019, y'all go back and go with the Bull Alumni team. Go with go back with the Bull Alumni team. Mm-hmm. So now it's me, BJ, Cat, um, my boy that I, uh, uh um. Oh man, and then my mind going blank. Play the Hampton. Yeah, the leader, leader score. I know you're talking. Mm-hmm. About. Mm-hmm. Had him, um, you know, and Tennessee. Yep, Mr. Tennessee. Mr. Tennessee. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we had a squad that time too, man. And we could have. I've never won a game. That <laughs> I've never won a game, man. Never. That that game y'all was up too. We was up. Yeah. That's what. I'm, <laughs> That's what I'm like. Oh, it's like we and can't. It, it did, that game, though, it seemed like y'all started going for. Certain people started going for self. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that, honestly, and it, when you're playing in the TBT, man, I mean, shoot, mind you, I right, come on, man, we're playing for a meal. Mm-hmm. I don't care if I score not a point. Mm-hmm. I just want to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to win, man. Mm-hmm. And I remember that first year we went, wife was pregnant. I'm like, oh, man, okay, cool. We going with this squad, baby. I'm about to get six figures. We about to be good <laughs> for a little while at least. And it fall apart. Mm-hmm. Then we get there, you know, for the Boo Williams team. And it fall apart again. And it's like, oh, man, yo. You need a solid team. Yeah. You need a solid team that's not for self. That's not for, you know, I'm just trying to get a bucket. I'm just trying to be seen on ESPN. But I'm trying to win. Yeah. But I'm trying to win. And if you ain't trying to win. Yeah, you right. definitely need players to buy in. You got to buy in. You got to buy in. God. You got to buy in, man. And if you're not going to buy in, why are you here, man? Honestly. Honestly, why are you here? Because this whole, I'm just trying to be seen, ain't going to work. <laughs> ain't going to work, man. For sure. So like I said before, you won a you won a championship in almost every city. Yes. Hoop League, Pro Am, Suffolk League, Norfolk League, True League. Like, what is what is it everybody always wants you on the team? What is it what is it about your game that you feel like <sighs> that you bring to a team? Cause you you definitely not a selfish player, but you do a lot of the like for me watching, you do a mm-hmm. lot of the stuff that people don't do. Right. Right. Boards. You play both sides of the court. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I think it was, for me, I've always been, I've based myself off of winning. You know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It wasn't how many points I scored. It wasn't how many shots I got up. You know, if we didn't win, then I don't care if I had 30 points that game. Like, we ain't winning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um... I'm willing to do whatever it takes to win. You know what I'm saying? Whether, you know, you want me to come off the bench. Truly, I came off the bench. I told Boogie, like, nah, bro. Like, I don't want to start. Like, Mm -hmm. I think we play better as a team if I come off the bench. Mm -hmm. You know? So, 
uh, whatever it takes, man. You know, um, defense, hands down, hands down. I would say I'm probably top three mm-hmm. in this area, two way, mm-hmm. two way player. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, I can get a bucket on the offensive end, and I'm willing to check whoever on the defensive end. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I think with with that, knowing that you got a player who don't really care if they get the ball every time down, but it's going to give you 100% on mm-hmm. this defensive end, that's the type of cast that you want. Yeah. That's the type of cast that's going to make a team great. You know what I mean? And whenever, um, you know, my number is called, like, I bet I can step up to the plate. Mm-hmm. I can step up to the plate, man. So, um I would definitely, you know, encourage anybody, man, that's coming up, dude. Like, you got to find a way that's going to keep you on the court, you know? Mm-hmm. I remember um, going back to when I first got to Shawan, I just had to find a way to keep me on the court. You know what I mean? Whether it was me playing offense, me defending somebody, me hitting a wide open shot. Like, whatever way I could find to keep me on the court, mm-hmm. I'm fine with yeah. I'm fine with man, so I think that's why you know um, players like that you're a high commodity. You know what I'm saying? So um, if you can be that type of a play on the court, man, shoot, you can play for any team. True, play for any team. True. What? What? Shawan, you you said he was top three in scoring there. Average. What about? I think it said eighteen, eighteen and eight. Mm-hmm. And, oh, it was 18, <laughs> 18 points, 8 rebounds, but it was like 5 assists and 3 steals. <laughs> yeah, those, yeah, <laughs> yeah like, hey. that's, those are good numbers. Good man. numbers, man. Good that numbers. Was like for all four seasons. For all four, averaging. yeah, averaging, averaging across the board, across the board, man. That's um, big, that's, that's, that's big. Yeah, that I means, shoot, like I said, finding whatever way I could do, man, to keep me on the court. You know what I'm saying? Um, and if some games, you know, shoot, I might have six points, but I got ten board. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Three steals, two assists, you know what I mean? So whatever, I knew that with my type of style, man, I could play for any team and I could go in any situation. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you need somebody to bring the ball up the court, all right, cool. You need somebody to hit a wide open shot, okay, cool. I can I can step in and do that in college now, man. I might, I might miss that joint by bye. <laughs> uh but but yeah, man, like I mean, I was willing and able to step up to the plate in different ways, man. And that's that's what kinda I think kinda kill certain cats now. They not willing to lay down for the team. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like they gotta be, I gotta be that guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I gotta take that. That's shot. the one reason I don't feel me <laughs> you right now because all the good kids is like so spread out, and I'm gonna just be like hectic going everywhere. I'm like, bro, <laughs> nah, nah, y'all supposed to be all. Why y'all, y'all not team. on the same? Why y'all can't all play on the same team, team yeah. man? But it's it's that it's that reason. Nobody, they not. I feel like you gotta when you do a collective, you gotta understand that you on an all star team. So you gotta play like it's the USA team. Y'all gotta mm. play for self. Come on, you know what I'm saying? And y'all gotta play to win. To win the game, man. The coach is gonna come as long as y'all win. If y'all win winning everything, the coaches are going to come. You don't even have to worry about yes. it. You don't even have to worry about it. They gonna show up. They gonna show up, and you already got a name for yourself anyway. So it's like exactly. they gonna come. trust me, man. They gonna see you. <laughs> they so, gonna see you. So now you coach. You help coach mm-hmm. at your alma mater. You mm-hmm. teach at your alma mater as well? Yep. So I teach there. Yeah. I teach there. So what's that like? Um, um, especially coaching, you know, seeing the, the new. How long you been coaching? Were you you were so, there when Ray Bellamy was playing? Yes. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah. yes, so, so yes, yeah, man. got a state championship. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. So um, that year that they won, man, um, I I wanted them to go to the state so bad. Yeah, yeah it was the COVID. play that game. Yeah, that was COVID, the COVID year, man. That shit sucked for everybody. I remember down to the wire, dude. Like this was like maybe three, four hours before we was actually about to go, about to leave. Mm. It was like, nah, you know, we're not gonna do it. 
I think the only person that actually played that year that legitimately won the states with, was with John. Jake. Did, Who? I thought John did uh, the oh, one yeah, in the John Marshall. John Marshall played. played. And then uh, Mac McClung team. Oh, they played too? Yeah. See? Because that's he broke Iverson record. Ah, yeah. see, that's probably why they let him play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are the only two teams I believe that played. That played that year, mm-hmm. man. And you know, it's it's kind of bittersweet, you know what I'm saying? Because you co state champions, like, mm-hmm. what is that? Yeah, you know what I mean. So, um, I think they definitely had they they had a, a great opportunity mm-hmm. of winning that year, man. Um, but. It's, it's good to still be connected because, you know, you look back to, you know, when we was playing and you got older guys that's been there, done that, you know, kind of um, instilling things in us um, coming up. Now we get that opportunity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To, you know, put a footprint on somebody's life, man, that's um, in high school, you know, coming up. I can tell you what it's like. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, give you some ins and outs, man. It's up to you to, you know, take heed to what I'm saying. But being in that position to actually um, have a footprint on somebody's life, man, it's like it's enormous. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's enormous, man. And showing somebody something, you know, off the court, showing them something, man, and then actually seeing them implemented in their life. And it's like, yo, sitting back like, like, yo, man, like, like, I showed him that. You do a move on the court, it's like, dang, man, oh, you use it. Like, I showed you that, man, you know? Like, so, so man, it's, it's, it's different, man, but but I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it, man, coaching, man. If anybody that um, you had a, a big imprint, you know, big imprint or little imprint when you was playing the game, man, mm-hmm. like, go back and coach. Go back and coach, man. It doesn't even matter, you know, on what level, whether it's recreation, high school, collegiate, man. Go back and coach, man. Honestly, bro, because, I mean, that's the only way that, you know, these pages going to turn and we're able to make the players after us, you know, better. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, is 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 they're helping me as much as I'm helping them. True. You know what I mean? I feel that. Okay. And uh, what's... Um before we get out of here, actually three questions. I'd mm-hmm. like to ask everybody three questions. Um, the first one is, what was the best player that you had to guard? <laughs> I had to know this all right off the rip, man. Mm. The one and only Marcus Fisher. Oh, my <laughs> God. Marcus Fisher, come on <laughs> the show. Eric, we need, oh, my God. I need the story, bro. We need a documentary. Oh bro. my God! Get this man a thirty for thirty, cuz. Oh sure, man. man, I'm telling. Like I remember playing him pro am, mm. Maury High School, man. That's the first time I seen him. Yeah. <sighs> I was like, who the fuck who, is this? Man, who the hell is this? Dude? <laughs> who is this guy, man? What school you go to? You ain't go to. Wait, well, you ain't playing those, man? Nah, bro. Nah, wait. <laughs> you went overseas somewhere? Nah, man. Like, hold up, bro. Like. <laughs> Come on, man. I say, so, like, hey, bro. Man, and actually sitting down talking to him, though, but he's the most humble dude that you're talking he is. to. Oh, my. He is. If he you is. ask him, man, he, he can't hoop. Mm-hmm. He don't know nothing. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But on the court, bro, like, I always used to pay attention to, you know, guys' footwork. Yeah. His footwork is bar none the mm-hmm. best I've ever went up against. Me and Bud, we was having an argument about, we was like, who got the best, who got the most pro-ready game right now? And it was out of the top two people was him and Pledge. Yes. His footwork, bro, like, he sees the game two or three moves ahead. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would play defense on him. No lie. My whole thing was like, yo, I just want to contest your shot. You know what I'm saying? If I can get my hand in your face, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're bound to miss. He cooked me <laughs> <laughs> for like five possessions straight. Mm-hmm. Marvelous defense. Yeah. Better offense. Yeah. Better offense, man. And it 
Left hand. I've never seen a dude shoot with his left hand. He can shoot with his left hand just as well as he can with his right. Yeah, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, finishing. Like, he's best guy I have, or toughest guy I've ever had to defend. Mm. For sure. Dang. For sure, man. Um, next question. Uh, if you could give your younger self any advice, what would it be? If I could give my younger self any advice, man, I would definitely tell him to put yourself out there more. Um, I would dim myself down. If I went somewhere, I don't want to stand out. You know what I mean? Like, I, nah, man, like I'm, I'm the introvert. You know what I'm saying? Um, put yourself out there more. You know what I mean? Um, don't be afraid to, you know, take this shot or don't be afraid to um, take something that you think might be a risk. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Um, definitely putting yourself out there more. Uh, that would that would be my main goal. That would be my main goal for sure. Mm -hmm. And last question. I know you still hoop a lot. We just played like a couple weeks well, mm -hmm. last week. Y'all definitely ran the court on us. <laughs> um, Six in a row. <laughs> what, um, how I want to say this, like, what's next for you? Like, what are you doing now? What's the next oh, like? Man, I honestly think, man, the era of 2-5 is, is, it might be done after this for Hoop League, man. Mm -hmm. It might be done, man. Um, I really want to take time with my family, man. You really don't realize how much you sacrifice, you know, going after the ball, mm -hmm. you know, um, time away from my family, wife, kids, um, you know, like I said, man, I didn't really have my dad, you know, coming up. Okay. Um, so being around, like kids play t-ball now, you know what I mean? Like some games, you know, fall on Saturdays and I was traveling, ABA, yeah. you know, I was traveling, you know, in the, uh, in some other league, uh, you know, playing in the tournament, man. But um, moving forward, I really just want to dedicate, you know, my life to my family, man. You know, just really being there and, and showing up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that's the, the biggest thing right now, man, is just showing up, you know. So I definitely want to be there, um, you know, for wife kids um and then um i got a nephew mm -hmm. uh you know that's uh playing for king's fork now you okay. know so um i'm actually transferring to uh king's fork oh, this, this upcoming year oh, <laughs> Lord. so i'm actually trying breaking news <laughs> remember bringing him to the gym man when he was younger and he never really took it serious then you know what i'm saying but now he's like asking me like hey um, you know like can we get in the gym hey um, can we do this and that so um he was a real big reason why i wanted to go there so now i can be with you one-on-one -on -one. you know what i'm saying so just um you know giving back to you know my legacies that's gonna be here when i'm dead and gone and you know, my my family, man, um, just pouring into them the way that I had, you know, some of the older guys pouring to me, man. Like, mm -hmm. that's 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 really what, what I want to do now. Mm -hmm. That's really what I want to do now, man. And I think, you know, go ahead and throw the, throw the kicks up on the, you know, the, the line, man. And, hey, this know, is last hoop league. <laughs> it's personal this year. This is personal this year, man, for sure. Yeah, yeah, two heartbreaks in a row. Two, oh, my Jesus. Two heartbreaks in a row. Two heartbreaks. Two heartbreaks, man. Third time's a chump. So the last time you won it was when we was on the same team? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, that was the last. That was the last time, man. That was the last time, man. And you know, it's 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 grown so much since then, yeah, though, bro. Yeah. Like, like I, it's, And I talked to I talked to Rob like after we had won it. You know, it won't yeah. the best competition that right. year, but I had watched the Drew League documentary like 
during after that, mm-hmm. and I was like, Rob, I'm gonna help you, bro. I was like, the only thing you're missing is the media content and like trying to get the best players because he knew he knew a lot of the best players right and then on this side of it. But I'm like, bro, mm-hmm. it's kids in Portsmouth that's good. It's kids in Hampton, yes. Newport News that's that is that great, can benefit man. from what you're doing as well this, too. Man. Yeah, so uh, I feel like it's bringing the better players out, but then it's also going to bring that crowd that you don't know, not the best competition, but because you're being seen, mm-hmm. they're going to come out. But you got to like try to weed yourself out of that and put Absolutely. the best comp out there and put the best competition out here, man. Yeah. I had a team, so the team that I played with, man, uh, Petersburg Cavaliers. Um, I played with them in the ECBL. Um, hit me up once uh, the commercial dropped. Mm-hmm. They was like, hey man, I see, I saw you on the commercial, man. Like, what league is that? I'm like, oh, yeah, man, that's the Virginia Hoop League, man. When that start, man, like, hey, like, we want to put our team in it. You know what I'm saying? So I think that more people are seeing it, man. And honestly, we have the, not only just the talent here, man, um, to make that league, like, majorly successful, mm-hmm. but with the talent that we have here, we can draw so many other people, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, into it, man. So, um, yeah, like, I, I honestly think, man, this this might be, I'm sorry to say this, man. <laughs> I'm sorry to say this. I love you to death, man. But this might be, man, the, the pro-am, the summer pro-am, mm-hmm. though, you know what I'm saying? Like, cats look to this, you know, coming from overseas, back from yeah. overseas, um, you know, you're in the collegiate, you know, level coming back from the off season, like this is what you want to be in. You know what I'm saying? So it has that potential. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It has that potential, man. It has that potential. I honestly think that it can get there for sure. Yeah, and if no we question. get there, hopefully we will get there. We can stop charging so much, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do all that. <laughs> Cause I know that. Oh, I know hey. that but, but once we get that sponsorship, bro, once we get it, once we, we can, get it, it, I know we, you can yeah. bring it down. You know, yeah, you know, yeah. a couple hundred. Once, hundreds. We, get that, once <laughs> we get that sponsorship, but yeah, shout out to the pro am, let the pro am. They pro-am. I actually started from the pro am. That was when I first started filming. Oh, what? Two thousand fifteen. I filmed that pro am in Maury. Huh. I film. I always tell this story. I filmed Mike Anderson. I made Mike Anderson that highlight tape. <laughs> And he went to China, Asia, and never came back. And he was there. He still ain't back. <laughs> he was there for twelve years. I was like, God, dang. So that's when I saw, like, dang, this shit can. It like, can really, it can really change get. your life. You for know sure. what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever. But for sure, man. But yeah, man, I definitely appreciate you coming, telling the story. Absolutely, man. Yes, sir. We we gotta get fish up here, Marky Cup, oh, me, all of y'all. Please, please come, man. <laughs> Cook, fish, man. Hey, man, you got a story to tell. Fish definitely need a documentary. Fish definitely. Get this man 30 for 30, man. Um, Get this man 30 for 30, for sure. Well, this is a new episode. Uh, we are 757. Seven. Appreciate y'all coming out.